Hello, friend. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. This is Pastor Pitts Evans. On this podcast, we read and discuss one chapter of God's Word per episode. Let's go now to the Bible and see what the Lord has for us today. Matthew chapter 17. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain to be by themselves. There, He was transfigured before their eyes. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I'll put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them, And a voice from the cloud said, This is my son who I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus instructed them, Don't tell anyone what you've seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The disciples asked him, Why then do the teachers of the law say that Elijah must come first? Jesus replied, To be sure, Elijah comes and will restore all things. But I tell you, Elijah has already come, and they did not recognize him, but have done to him everything they wished. In the same way, the Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he was talking to them about John the Baptist. When they came down to the crowd, a man approached Jesus and knelt before him. Lord, have mercy on my son, he said. He has seizures and is suffering greatly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. I brought him to your disciples, but they couldn't heal him. You unbelieving and perverse generation, Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of the boy, and he was healed at that very moment. Then the disciples came to Jesus in private, and they asked, Why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, Because you have so little faith. I tell you the truth, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. When they came together in Galilee, he said to them, The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him, and on the third day he will be raised to life. And the disciples were filled with grief over these sayings. After Jesus and his disciples arrived in Capernaum, the collectors of the two drachma temple tax came to Peter and asked, Doesn't your teacher pay the temple tax? Yes, he does, he replied. When Peter came into the house, Jesus was the first to speak. What do you think, Simon Peter, he asked? From whom do the kings of the earth collect duty and taxes? From their own children or from others? From others, Peter answered. Then the children are exempt, Jesus said to him. But so that we may not cause offense, go to the lake and throw out your line. Take the first fish you catch Open its mouth, and you will find a four drachma coin. Take it and give it to them for my tax and for yours. We have in this chapter the story of the transfiguration of Jesus, the Mount of Transfiguration. That word transfiguration in Greek is metamorphoso, and it's the same word that's used for a caterpillar becoming a butterfly. It changes from a caterpillar into something much more glorious that we recognize as a butterfly, this metamorphosis, this transfiguration. And so Jesus was transfigured right before the eyes of Peter, James, and John into somewhat like he was before the incarnation as a human being. In other words, the Lord allowed some of his glory to be once again visible on the earth in the form of Jesus's body. And Peter, James, and John witnessed it. Verse 1, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, led them up to a high mountain to be by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. 
And so what was this transfiguration? It describes it. It says, his face shone like the sun, and even his clothes became as white as the light. And just then, in addition to what was happening with Jesus, two men appeared. And the Bible says they were Moses and Elijah, and they were talking to Jesus. Now, Peter was overwhelmed by all of this. And uh, he wanted to build three little houses for Jesus and Moses and Elijah. He wanted to build three little shelters or tabernacles on the mountain. But while he was still talking about these things, a bright cloud came over them and a voice spoke out of the cloud. And when this happened, Peter and James and John all fell on their faces. But the voice said this, this is the voice of God the Father. This is my son whom I love. With him I'm well pleased. Listen to him. My friends, that is good instructions from the mouth of God, both to Peter and James and John and to you and I. We should listen to the words of the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the New Testament that we're reading day after day is full of the words of the Son of God. We need to listen to him because he is the son of his father. His father is pleased with him. He was 2,000 years ago, and he is today. So this Jesus was the one that was speaking to James and John, and it had been prophesied in the Old Testament that Elijah the prophet would come before the coming of the Lord, before the day of the Lord. And so the disciples had just seen Elijah appear on the mountain, and so they had questions about Elijah. And they asked Jesus, why do the teachers of the law say that Elijah must first come? And Jesus responded and said, Elijah does come and will restore all things. But I tell you, Elijah has already come. And he was talking about John the Baptist. And the disciples understood he was talking to them about John the Baptist. So how was John the Baptist Elijah? Well, he came in the spirit and the anointing of Elijah, just as Elijah's protege, Elisha, had come. And so John had come to set the people's hearts back on the Lord God of Israel in preparation for the coming of the Messiah. John had come to turn the hearts of the people back to the Lord, to turn them to repentance, just like Elijah the prophet had done a thousand years prior, and just like Elisha the prophet had done, his protege had done. And before the return of the Lord, there will be others that move in this anointing of Elijah, in this restoration anointing, this prepare the way anointing that Elijah moved in. So not necessarily will Elijah the prophet personally reappear on the earth, but the anointing, the authority he walked in, the call that he walked in will once again be seen on the earth, operating in those who are preparing the way for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus then goes on to foretell his crucifixion and resurrection. Verse 22, when he came together with his disciples to Galilee, he said to them, the son of man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him. And on the third day, he'll be raised to life. And the disciples were filled with grief. And so this was a very hard thing to convey to them that he was going to die. But he knew what he had been born to do. He knew what was predestined for him, if you will, by the Father, and he was willing to accept it. So he tried to explain to the disciples that he had to be killed and that on the third day he'd be raised from the dead. But they didn't understand these things until after they had happened. In verse 24, Jesus and his disciples arrived back in Capernaum, which was their headquarters. And people came to the disciples of Jesus, to Peter especially, and said, doesn't Jesus pay the temple tax? And Peter, not knowing what to say, replied, yes, he does, of course. And then Peter went and found Jesus. And uh, rather than wait for Peter to ask the question, Lord, do we pay the temple tax? Jesus responded and said, what do you think, Peter? From whom do the kings of the earth collect duty and taxes, from their own children or from others? From others, Peter answered. Then the children are exempt, Jesus said to him. In other words, the Son of God didn't have to pay temple taxes. The Son of God didn't have to pay tithes and offerings. The Son of God was the one who should have been receiving these things, but so that he didn't transgress the law or unnecessarily offend those that were trying to receive the temple tax, he gave Peter some unusual instructions. He said, so that we not cause offense, go to the lake and throw out your line, take the first fish you catch, open its mouth, and you'll find a four drachma coin. Take it and give it to them for my temple tax and yours. And so Peter went out to the Sea of Galilee and he threw his line in and caught a fish. And sure enough, there was a four drachma coin in the fish's mouth. Now, if you go to Israel today and go to the Sea of Galilee and eat in a restaurant along the banks of the Sea of Galilee, they serve what they call St. Peter's fish. Whether this is the same type of fish or the same species that Peter caught, I don't know. 
But the Jewish leadership that have the various restaurants around the Sea of Galilee recognize this story of Peter's fish. And to this very day, you can go and eat a a St. Peter's fish. I haven't seen any with the coin in their mouth, but I've eaten several of these fish and they're quite good. But I want to return to the transfiguration. James, Peter, and John saw Jesus transfigured right before their eyes. In the Gospel of John, Jesus was recognized by John as the Son of God. In the letters of John, in 1 John, John said, We have seen his glory. And so this seeing his glory was this transfiguration. Now, none of the early disciples that knew Jesus ever recanted their testimony about him being the Son of God. All of them continued to testify to the things they had seen, his miracles, his deity, his transfiguration, his rulership over nature, walking on the water, the multiplication of matter with food, the healings, the deliverance. They all continued to testify to these things all the way up until their death. And the testimony to death carries weight. In other words, a deathbed confession is deemed as um, uh, having a very high credibility in any court. It always has been. None of the original apostles of Jesus Christ ever recanted their testimony. He's the Messiah. He's the Son of the living God. I want you to consider that, friends, because there's a lot of false religions in the world. There's a lot of religions where people early on will say this and that happened. But when the time comes for them to die or when they're actually challenged about these things, they'll take their testimony back and say, no, no, somebody told me to say that. I'm not picking on Mormons, but Joseph Smith had four friends who had the testimony that they backed up Joseph and they all recanted it before their deaths. And so the original apostles of Christ never changed their story. How about you, friends? Do you change your story about who Jesus is? He's the son of the living God. The father said, this is my son whom I love. With him, I'm well pleased. Listen to him. Lord, I pray that we would recognize Jesus for who he is. I pray, Heavenly Father, that we would see how pleased you are with Jesus and that we would listen to the words of Jesus. And I pray like the early apostles, Lord, we would not recant our testimony of what Jesus means to us. Lord, by life or by death, may our lives be for his glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.